Hi everyone, it's Adam here from Ads Productions and this is the review of the Logitech MX Keys keyboard. This keyboard has been out since roughly 2019, so there are no shortage of reviews out there, but seeing as I wanted to pick this keyboard up, I figured why not give my feedback on it, as it might be useful to some people out there, to see if it's still a relevant keyboard today. So because potentially you've seen some of my other keyboard videos on YouTube, you might be thinking, why did I decide to pick this style of keyboard up? Well, the main reason was that I was looking for a professional looking keyboard that was very smooth and easy to type on, with the other main requirement being that it must not be mechanical. I work an office based job and usually type around 8 plus hours a day, give or take, so I figured I would treat myself to the MX keys, as from the reviews that I've read, this is the keyboard to go for if you want chiclet style keys that won't make noise and if you're typing constantly. Let's put that to the test. First of all though we'll go over the design of the keyboard. This particular version of the MX keys is the graphite one. It is a very very sleek keyboard. There aren't any bells and whistles, there aren't any RGB lights around the side, there's no neons on the underside to make it look like it's levitating. It's not supposed to be that kind of keyboard. It's one of these flush looking, very modern, slimline keyboards that are meant to fit in with an office setup that's going to look like, you know, you've got your big monitor there with your speakers and you've got the keyboard on the center, looking like you're ready for serious business. This might sound like a bit of an exaggeration, but this genuinely is probably the most well-made keyboard that I've ever used. The weight of this keyboard feels like a solid sheet of metal and makes you feel like you are working on a tech product that is built for whatever you can throw at it. If you're worried about fingerprints, don't be. I've used this for a few days now in my office workplace. There is no need to be concerned about fingerprints. It just doesn't happen on this keyboard. Fingerprints are nothing to be worried about with this keyboard. They're not going to be a problem. They're not going to overshadow the design. You won't see them, it won't be an eyesore. Let's move on. There is an MX Keys mini version that's also available without the number pad on the right hand side. And you also should be careful to make sure you order the right one. You can order an MX Keys for Mac or the one for PC, which is the one you can see now. The last thing I'm sure you'd want to do is get your order in, get all excited, ready for your new keyboard, only for it to be delivered and find out you can't use it on your device. So just make sure you pick the right one, the Mac, the PC or the Mini. On the rear of the keyboard we have the on off switch as well as a USB-C charging port. On the underside of the keyboard there are six tabs or feet or whatever you want to call them. They have a rubberized texture to them and they hold the keyboard in place. Although the weight of this keyboard means that it's not going to be moving around even on a slippery desk. Logitech do sell a palm rest that goes along with this keyboard. I decided against it and I'm glad I made that decision. Using this keyboard for a full day of work without the palm rest, I didn't have any strain in my hands, in my wrists. It was perfect. Typing away, fatigue is not a concern. What I would probably recommend doing because everyone has slightly different shaped hands is go into your local tech store see if you can find this keyboard with the palm rest and give it a go before committing to the purchase having said that you can buy the mx palm rest as an add-on after the fact there is a raised bar on the underside of the keyboard which does provide a little bit of elevation to the keyboard meaning that any pressure that would have been on your wrists will no longer be there Therefore, in my opinion, removing any need to have a wrist rest or a palm rest. Again, it's up to you and your preferences and your hand style. This keyboard uses chiclet keys and as a result of that, the distance to travel is very minimal, which means you'll be able to get some rapid typing done and there won't be those longer presses that you would come to experience with certain mechanical keyboards. Speaking of chiclet style keys, one of the main differences between chiclet style keys and mechanical keys tends to be the amount of noise that it produces. Let's do a quick sound test so you can hear what this keyboard is like when I'm typing on it. Here we go, here's the sound test.
So enough about the design and what it looks like. What's it actually like to use on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, when you first take it out of the box and you put it in front of your setup and you begin using it, the first thing that you will immediately notice is the low profile nature of it. I found myself being able to type more fluidly as there was more of a bounce to the keys. This might have felt like a bit of an illusion, but I genuinely think it's easier for fluid typing on this keyboard. Comparing it to other keyboards I've used in the past, when you type your hands kind of flow to the next word. I know it sounds like I'm giving you some sort of marketing spiel about you know, how revolutionary it is to type on this. But I'm just being honest, it's easier to type on this keyboard than it is a lot of other keyboards. Being honest though, I did find that there were a few times where due to the very small travel distance because of the Chiclet keys, I did mistype a few things here and there because my trailing finger pressed L or K or N when it shouldn't have. This wouldn't have happened on a mechanical keyboard when there's more travel distance. Over time though, that won't happen. It's just getting your hands used to the way of typing on the particular keyboard, having to take more care of where your fingers trail to on the surrounding keys. The typing experience is very nice. As I said, it allows you to type a lot quicker, I feel. And there's way less typing fatigue on a keyboard that doesn't require harder and more defined presses, whereas this one you can kind of float your hands on top of the keys. It will just feel more natural to you because you can focus on the content and typing on the screen and concentrating on your work rather than pushing down on the keys in other keyboards. This keyboard has clearly been engineered in such a way to focus on the comfort and daily usage of the device. Each key has a groove in it, which means that your fingers sit comfortably on each key as you're typing. When you flow from one key to another, these grooves really do maximize the comfort of day-to-day -day typing. And it really is obvious that there's so much engineering that's gone into this keyboard to try and make it comfortable and fun to use and it won't give your hands any fatigue or any problems. When you use this keyboard for a few hours the first time, you will realize how much of a difference it makes going from a keyboard that has more of an emphasis on how do we make the keys more responsive and more accurate in gaming to one that says, how do I make this more comfortable for professional and office and business users? The difference is definitely noticeable. And for non-gaming and typing and business and word documents and editing, I'm going more towards this chiclet style of keys for the future. There is a backlight featuring on this keyboard, which relies on two main sensors. The first sensor is a proximity sensor. The way this works is by using a magnetic field to turn on the backlighting when it senses hands are near or fingers, and then it will turn off when the hands are removed or pulled away. The other sensor is an ambient light sensor. This is where it adjusts the brightness to match whatever lighting it senses in your environment. So for example, if it gets dark in your room, the lights will increase. And if you turn on the lights, the lights will fade. For me, I didn't really use this keyboard in dark conditions as wherever I tend to work, I have the lights on, be it at the office or at home. So I just turn the backlight completely off. You can do that using some of the shortcuts at the top of the keyboard. Doing this, you will also save battery life. Speaking of some of the keys at the top of the keyboard, I won't bore you with every individual detail, but I couldn't do this review without mentioning the three keys, one, two, and three, which allow you to switch this keyboard between multiple devices. With the use of what's called the Logitech Options software, you can have this installed on a few machines and switch between whatever device you want to use this keyboard for using device one, two, and three keys that are on the keyboard. For example, you could have this keyboard in the center of your desk. You could have a laptop to the left, a PC in the middle, and an iPad on the right. You can click one, two, or three on the keyboard to choose which device you want this keyboard to control. I did try this and it did work seamlessly. 
However, for full transparency, I don't really use this feature. I know that might come as a shock or a surprise, but for me, the main selling point of this keyboard was the design, the feel, and the usability. Logitech Options, the software I just mentioned, also allows you to customize the top row of function keys, as well as some of the, what I would probably consider, not that useful keys on the right hand side. So you've got your lock button at the top right, you've got the button for print screen, etc. They can also be customized. You can change, for example, the brightness increase key to launch League of Legends if you want to, or you could get it to launch Discord. The flexibility there at the top is pretty nice. It's not extensive, it's not going to allow you to do macros and things like that, but if you want to change a couple of the keys to launch a couple of different and unique applications on your PC, it's nice to have. As this keyboard uses USB-C for charging, you'll find that you'll get full charge in a few hours. You'll also be able to get 10 days on a full charge. That's with backlighting turned on. If you turn the backlighting off, Logitech thinks you'll be able to get five months of usage before having to charge it again. Seeing is believing, but I've got absolutely no reason to doubt it. The dongle that you have to plug in to allow connectivity from the keyboard to your PC is very small. So just be very careful when taking this out of the box because you might lose it. It happens, just be careful. It's pretty industry standard though to have a tiny USB dongle for a keyboard like this. Nothing more to say on that really. If you're the sort of person that wants the RGB gaming keyboard with full blue switch key, all of that stuff, this keyboard is obviously not for you. And the chances are you wouldn't have made it this far in the video. If you're someone like me that wants a keyboard that fits into a professional style working environment, is very quiet, has excellent build quality, allows you to type comfortably on it for hours on end with no strain on your hands, as well as having support for up to three devices and having a proximity sensored backlight and full customization of the top row of keys on the keyboard, as well as charging very quickly and lasting for ages. This keyboard is clearly the obvious choice. If you have any questions about this keyboard or the review that I've done, feel free to leave it in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching. This has been Adam from Ads Productions with the review of the Logitech MX Keys wireless keyboard.